All right, so it's day three of the Tome Topple, and I have to say I haven't made it very far. Today was a 10 hour work day. I had to be at work at 5.30, so I didn't get that much reading done during the day. It's now evening time and I'm trying to read, but I'm so sleepy that I don't know how much longer. I'm working on Lorna Dune, I'm about 276, 77 pages in, and I'm going to try and stay awake long enough to read it. It's only like 6.30 or something like that, and I, I'm just <sighs> struggling. <laughs> I haven't started any of my audiobooks yet because I'm listening to The New Jim Crow, and I'm trying to finish that in time for my book club Zoom meeting on Thursday. So I'll get that one finished. I've got about five hours left of listening to that one, and then I'll start working on my audiobooks for Tome Topple. Today is not a day of progress. <laughs> so one thing I've noticed about Lorna Dune, which I thought was kind of funny, all of the writing is so whimsical and descriptive and pretty that even in scenes where something really bad is happening, for like example, I'm reading about the Great Winter, which was this horrific winter where there was tons of snow, it killed a whole bunch of his livestock, and yet everything sounds so beautiful and lovely. And <laughs> he takes the time to be very descriptive and I noticed this from some of the other scenes that were supposed to be grim and dismal. The way he describes things makes them seem not as bad, not as dark, and, and not as difficult. They're not struggling as much as they should be because they have the time to enjoy how beautiful everything is. All right, it's breakfast and Lorna Dune. I've got some pear and salted caramel granola mixed with some Cheerios. Luckily, I, today I don't have to go into the field, so... I'm going to read a bit and then do a little bit of at-home work. That's all my plans are for today, just a lot of reading. Okay, one thing I should point out though is that in Lorna Dune there's definitely a large amount of sexist comments and they don't necessarily treat their servants like they are full humans. And considering the voice of the narrator and the time period that this was reflecting, the 1600s, it's not surprising that there were class issues and that they treated servants as less than human in a sense, or at least not as intelligent as the upper class. And then also women were treated as definitely as property, also more so like they, they're just so emotional they can't really handle emotional situations. I mean, the narrator doesn't understand them and doesn't claim to understand them and tends to think that they're smarter than he is in ways that he can't possibly fathom. But then the majority of the characters just think women are less than and that they have certain roles. And so there's definitely problematic themes in here, specifically sexism and uh, class differences. made some lunch. This is called artichoke crab cakes. They're not actual crab in them. And then there's like a couscous, cucumber and tomato salad, and it's gonna be delicious. I want to share a quick quote from Lorna Doom, which I really liked. Hope, for instance, is nothing more than desire with a telescope magnifying distant matters, overlooking near ones, opening one eye on the objects, closing the other eye to all objections. Pretty insightful. Oh, and the next one's pretty good too. And if hope be the future tense of desire, the future of fear is religion. It's crazy old day in the CC world. Ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. Good morning, it is day six of Tome Topple, and to be honest, it's getting away from me. I'm still on Lorna Dune. I'm at page 433. I think because the last few weeks have been so busy, I'm just not, I'm motivated for Tome Topple, but I'm not in a rush. And so I'm reading as much as I can, when I can, trying to get stuff accomplished outside of that. And whatever gets read during this time gets read. So this morning I'm gonna continue working on Lorna Dune. And then after that, I'll start on The Warmth of Other Suns. But today is a day that I don't really quite know my work schedule yet. I'll find out later and maybe I'll be going out this afternoon. Good morning, it's early o'clock and I am heading out to work right now. It's still dark outside. 
<laughs> so obviously too early. I did not get a chance to finish Lorna Dune last night. I came close, which kept me up way later than I should have stayed up. I'm at page 500 and something, so I didn't get enough sleep. But that's okay, because I was working towards my goal, and I finished New Jim Crow, which I know is not part of the Tome Topple. Finished that, and I had my book club last night, and I will definitely do a video about that book because I feel like it's very important. I'm heading off to work. I'm going to start listening again to Children of Blood and Bone. I will finish... Lorna Dune today. We'll see. Work. I don't. Sounds like we don't have a very large spot that we're defishing, so we will see how long that takes. And then maybe I'll get home a little early and keep reading. All right, so I just got back from work, and it wasn't too long of a day actually, so that's pretty nice. It's still beautiful outside. I've been listening to Children of Blood and Bone in the car, and it's fantastic so far. At this point, Zaley goes to the main town of Lagos to try and sell a sailfish, like this really rare fish, and she runs into the princess of the kingdom. One thing leads to another, and Zaley is rescuing the princess from the palace guards because she is a fugitive. So. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with this. Zilli didn't know that it was a princess, so she's pretty pissed that she uh, rescued someone who she d believes doesn't really need rescuing. We'll see how it goes from here, see what happens once they start getting their magic. I'm looking forward to it. The audiobook is so good. Okay, it's Friday evening and I have finished Lorna Dune. For historical romance, I really enjoyed it a lot. I think I'd give it about four stars. I actually really enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the story. And I loved R.D. Blackmore's writing style. I just thought he was a beautiful writer. And that sort of maybe where people have felt that the story dragged when they had read it, I felt that it was charming. There's definitely a lot of not very charming parts, but uh, just the writing style to me was very beautiful. So I, I greatly enjoyed that. Finish Lorna Dune. We're gonna take our dog for a walk down to the park and then probably gonna start The Moms of Other Sons. Or I still have a couple of movies that I didn't get to watch. I read The Color Purple and Practical Magic. And since I just read those recently, I'd like to watch them. Good morning, it is day eight. And last night, as you know, I finished Lorna Dune. We, went, we took the dog for a walk and it was beautiful and lots of mosquitoes. And then um, watch Practical Magic and I read like four pages of Warmth of Other Suns before falling asleep. <laughs> so, not much to report from last night, but today is a uh, Warmth of Other Suns day. I've got a couple of things going on. We have a couple Zoom meeting get-togethers, including one of my good friend's birthday. So the problem with tomes like this is that if you're reading while you're lying in bed and say you start dozing and as you're dozing oh the dog just jumped on me as you're dozing you know you drop your book you drop your book and if you drop this thing on your forehead you're probably gonna pass out <laughs> so I guess that's these aren't very easy to read like when you're you know comfortable lying in bed because probably gonna do some real damage but yeah that's my enlightened conversation for this morning <laughs> of tome topple <laughs> mm. okay so it is 7 43 on saturday and i had two zoom meetings today one with a, a group of good friends and then another for a friend's birthday we got together and played games and that was great, a lot of fun. And then what else did I do? Oh, actually I filmed two videos and I edited one. So I actually didn't get a lot of reading done today. So this seems to be a theme of my tome topple, but I had a good day. I read a little bit of The Warmth of Other Suns and I will be reading more this evening as I head off to bed and hopefully make a bit of a dent. That being said, it was a beautiful day and I really enjoyed what I did spend the day doing. So I'll keep moving forward. Just as an update, I'm on the warmth of other suns and I'm on Children of Blood and Bone. Good morning, it's day nine and we just decided, mom and I, to do 30 days of one mile walk slash runs. Mom's going to walk and I'm going to try and run a whole mile. Today I ran most of it very slowly. Now my glasses are fogging up. 
So today's Sunday. We have a little family outdoor socially distanced get together that I'm probably gonna go to and then we gotta do some shopping. But other than that, I was listening to Children of Blood and Bone while I was running and I'm probably gonna listen to it while I'm driving out to my family's place. So I'm just loving Children of Blood and Bone. It's very exciting. Okay, so uh, after a long day of do running around, visiting family and actually going to the Asian market to pick up some ramen and some fun goodies. The pace is, they do a very good job of keeping up the pace, the excitement. And at this point, Zaley, Amari, and Zayn are running away to try to reignite the magic for good. And they're being followed by Anon and Kaya, who are trying to stop them, kill Zaley, and rescue Amari. Now that I'm home for good for the day, I'm working on warmth of other sons. Isabel Wilkerson spent hundreds and hundreds of hours collecting the oral histories from the different participants she had that gave information on the Great Migration. I love the process of oral histories. There's only so much you can get from, hi from history books and from what's been written down. You know, you don't get the whole picture, you don't get all the emotions, you don't get all the feelings until you have actual stories that people relay to you. And so I'm really appreciating that a lot. Right now I'm kind of, come on car. There's three main people that she focuses on throughout this book. She has stories from other people who were part of the Great Migration, but she focuses around three main lives. And I'm reading about Ida Mae Gladney right now. She grew up in Mississippi and I think that they, they left and went to Chicago. I haven't quite got to that part yet. This is just talking about her experience in Mississippi. I'm really enjoying The Warmth of Other Sons this second time reading it. And I'm gonna have a little bit of dinner and continue reading. Good morning, it is day 11 of Tome Topple, and I really didn't film, actually I didn't film at all yesterday, because it was a pretty busy day. I worked, then I worked on editing a video for a good portion of the day. I listened to a lot of Children of Blood and Bone, and I didn't work at all on The Warmth of Other Suns, so my focus today after doing some work is to get through some of this. Children of Blood and Bone, so good, and I, I think I only have about six and a half hours left of that one. I'm at the part where Zaylee, Amari, Zane, and Inan end up at the diviner camp with all the diviners that have gathered together, and it just gets, I mean, crazy battle of a lifetime. It was exciting. I feel like it's a really well-balanced book. I'm really enjoying it. Definitely had some tears last night. <laughs> okay, so I finished doing my run this morning, and that went well, and I was listening to Children of Blood and Bone, and then I came home, and I haven't been able to stop listening to it. It's so exciting. It's one of those books that you have a hard time putting down once you really get into it. I'm still listening to that right now. <laughs> and my excuse is that I'm eating lunch, so it's okay to listen more to the book while I eat lunch, right? <laughs> so, it is a very good book. Okay, so it's day 12 of Tome Topple, and I am... I made it fairly far in The Warmth of Other Suns. I'm at about page 230. There's 544 pages, so I did pretty well last night. <sighs> this is a hard one to read. It's coming back to me now how difficult it is to read. I know that the topic is obviously a difficult topic, but I just didn't remember how much detail some of her stories went into. And I guess it is because you need to know how extremely horrific the era of Jim Crow was. So as far as Children of Blood and Bone go, I've got about two hours and 20 minutes left. I listened to an hour of it this morning when I was exercising and it's just breaking my heart. Oh, it's so, I did a lot of crying on my walk this morning. Oh, it's so good, but it's so painful. There's a lot of emotions and feelings in this book. I am loving Children of Blood and Bone. I'm having a hard time not listening to that when I know I need to be reading this as well, trying to get both of these tomes done for this Tome Topple Challenge. They did a little bit of work and I'm gonna do some more here in a little bit. And I'm gonna continue reading this while I make myself sort of a late breakfast, lunch sort of thing. And that's my plan for today. I've kind of fallen off of the whole Instagram challenges thing. I was doing pretty well. I had quite a few of those done, but I really haven't felt like doing it for the last several days. So not as many Instagram challenge photos from me, but I just put a video up and I'm gonna work on, a, I've got some ideas for a few more that I'm gonna work on. So maybe I'll be working on videos a little more this week as well. As far as I can tell, that's what I'm gonna do today. I have some clothes I need to fold. I have a couple of online things I need to accomplish. 
I just did my orientation because I'm taking a class this fall at the local community college. So I mean, I'm getting some things accomplished. I'm not just reading 24-7. just got a bath and she's not happy. Look at that sad face, a clean little doggy. <laughs> she hates baths. <laughs> okay, so I just finished Children of Blood and Bone while doing my walk this morning and it was incredible throughout. That book was definitely a five-star book for me and I loved it. I really appreciated the afterword written by Tomi Adeyemi and it confirmed what I originally had felt about this book was that it was really focused on the struggles of black Americans and it parallels the book that I'm reading The Warmth of Other Suns really well so it's actually two really good books to be reading at the same time. I 100% recommend this book. I think it's fantastic and I'm really sad that it's over. I know that there's a sequel I think or there's supposed to be and so I'll have to look into that and see what that's all about. I am still working on The Warmth of Other Suns. I I have 212 pages of that left, so I think I can get it done before the Tome Topple Challenge ends tomorrow. As far as audiobooks go, I probably will start on A Distant Mirror, The Calamitous 14th Century, because that is one of my other Tome Topple Challenges, and I'm gonna plan on trying to listen to that throughout, you know, the rest of this week, but then also in September. Moving forward! La, la. cases did not take in the wide range that I wanted, nor a cleric or saint, because they are outside the limits of my comprehension. The Turkish Sultan Bayezid, future by his contemporaries, old, enterprising, and avid for war, and surname of Thunderbolt, the rapidity of his strikes, is described by a modern Hungarian historian as effeminate, sensual, irresolute, and vacillating. So I ended up getting a bit busy tonight. Uh, running around and then visiting with a friend on the phone for a while and so I have not got a chance to read too much of Warmth with Their Sons but I'm working on it now. I'm on page 345 and I am determined to get this book done. I started listening to A Distant Mirror while I was doing some sewing and I realized that I actually think I've started that book before. I don't know how much I read. It's a very long book so I probably started it at one point and wasn't able to finish it so I set it down. I don't know how far I got into it the last time I read it but I'll find out as I continue to read it. to read The Warmth of Other Suns and I'm on page 397 so getting close to page 400 and one of the things I was thinking about that I appreciate about this book is actually the stark frankness of it the stories that are so there's no beating around the bush you know maybe painful but give me the reality in any non-fiction there's going to be bias there's going to be bias one way or the other I like to know for this writer and the people that she interviewed what their realities were. I just, this book is just really good and I'm enjoying it. And I will definitely talk about it a bit more when I also talk about the new Jim Crow in my upcoming August nonfiction recommendation review. Oh, it's starting to rain. We got a storm coming in. Okay, so I did it. I finished The Worm with the Mother Sons and it is only 11 p.m. I actually ended up having to go do some uh, socially distance socializing with my friend it was good to spend time with her I haven't seen her in quite a while and get back quickly so I could finish the last 30 pages of my book and I have finished them I finished the warmth of other sons I finished children of blood and bone and I finished Lorna Dune that's three books for the tome topple challenge altogether that's roughly 1300 pages ish maybe less around there and so that's pretty good for two weeks considering I was exhausted and a bit burnt out. Okay, so before I fall asleep for the evening, I wanted to give you a quick 
idea of how those three books fulfilled the Tome Topple challenges. Just so you know, you can use one book to fulfill two challenges. So, Lorna Dune was a standalone book, and it was a book that I, so I twisted this one a little bit. It was supposed to be a book that you'd read for a previous Tome Topple challenge, but I've never done a Tome Topple challenge before. So, it was a book that I was had previously started. Children of Blood and Bone was a Tome audiobook, and it was also from a genre that I don't read very often. I, I don't read fantasy that often. Warmth of Other Suns was written by a black author and it fulfilled the read one tome because I read it from start to finish during the Tome Topple Challenge. That is six total, which makes me a scholar in the Tome Topple world. So I've started A Distant Mirror. I've, I've, I've gotten about maybe about two hours into it and it's like a 28 hour long audiobook. And so I don't really know if I can consider that book. It's something I've started during Tome Topple Challenge. If I'm allowed to consider that one, then it's the tome that's been on my TBR for the longest. It's the oldest book on my Goodreads TBR. If that counts, then I've fulfilled seven challenges and I am a Tome Topple Sage. So I don't know if we count that if I started it and didn't finish it. All right, well, thank you for watching my Tome Topple vlog. Hopefully this doesn't end up being too long or too tedious and you have a good time seeing what kind of fun I got into over the last two weeks. If you enjoyed this, click the like button and subscribe right now so you can see more about my bookish adventures. And thank you so much for watching. Take care, bye.